Now, one of the tactics that is probably the oldest way of reducing your costs has been the idea of fewer experienced workers. Let's bring in the new college grad. We'll pay them half. They'll be happy to have the job and we'll be able to get away with a marginal uh, you know, roster of salaries here and whatever we're losing in the experience we'll make up for in training. It certainly feels like that we're at the end of the line for that, both it's because done. of the shortage, <laughs> the shortage of the young worker. But yeah, let's talk about your recommendation, though. You have to get better at hiring the more experienced and older talent. But that's a fundamentally different recruiting it sure is. I mean, that changes but everything he, but, about but, but, your but, process. But wait, 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 wait. I'm not suggesting that you go recruiting for these folks. I'm suggesting you try to keep them because you already have these folks working in your enterprises right now. Many of them might want to stay post 65 or post 70, but they might not necessarily love the way their job is set up or where they're working within the enterprise. And guess what? The math changes after 65. You don't, you're not as concerned about healthcare anymore because the government covers that. Um, you're more concerned about having, um, we call this life stage benefits, making sure that an organization is set up for life stages. So that if you're 65, I'm just throwing that number out there. Please don't hit me for this, folks who are for pro-aging advocates. If you're 65 and you're and you're thinking about retiring, if your business comes to you and says, you know what, Bob, we really like the work that you're doing. Would you consider going halftime? And they give Bob a flexible work option. Bob might be interested in that. But Bob may no longer want to work a full-time job. So to get to your point, Brian, older workers tend to be better in terms of their efficiencies. They know how to do their jobs. Younger people, not as efficient. Older people, more efficient because they understand how the job is done. So you can make the argument, okay, we can get that 20-something for half the price, but they're going to take twice as long to do it. Meanwhile, an older old employee like Bob might actually know how to do it in less time. So going half time, half salary for somebody like that might actually be a good deal. But life stage benefits, life stage approach to work really becomes central in, in the approach for businesses going forward because we are, in fact, moving away from a recruitment-centered environment to a retention-centered environment. So I don't know about you. My grandfather worked for the same company his entire life. Like the second he got out of the war, he went to work for Westinghouse. He spent 40 years there, retired with a Westinghouse pension. Are we going back to a 40-year career within one company? Not quite yet. But could we be inching in that direction? Yes, absolutely. Because it is really expensive to recruit people in a tight labor market. Like really, really expensive. So if I can figure out a way to retain my best people, it's better for my bottom line. It might require a little bit more work to get the systems up and running, but on the whole, it's better for me as an organization. What you're going to see businesses also do very quickly is they're going to move away from hiring from a specific skill almost overnight because specific skills become redundant too quickly. Um, if you're a coder now, your job is not as important as it was because the machines can code. But if you can hire somebody who's a skilled communicator, who has the ability to work across um, the enterprise, hire somebody that's really curious and creative, I think those people that have strong liberal arts backgrounds are, are really poised for greatness in this new period. Um, they're the ones that are really going to shine because they can move across things and they can learn. They're active engaged learners. So these are the folks that, you know, might go back for another degree, but even if they're not going back for another degree, they're leveraging the other tools that they have to learn. Now that can be in, in office trainings. Look for those people who's going to those trainings. They're active learners. Are people utilizing YouTube, the platform everybody's on to learn new skills? Are they going back for, you know, uh, certifications. Like these are the people you want to really latch yourself into because they're the ones who are, are willing to stay and are willing to make investments in themselves.